You guys notice anything? Good morning, YouTube! What's up, guys? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. This is a Run Like Keller t-shirt that will be available to you hopefully November 1st. That's right guys, I'm coming out with my own merch. I'm so excited. I'm fingers crossed it'll be November 1st as long as nothing goes wrong. A lot of you have been asking me for some time when I'm gonna come out with my merch and it's finally here. Be sure to keep an eye on my Instagram. I'll post any information that I can there. Thank you guys for even being interested in my merch at all. And also special thanks to Phil from Midnight Design. He is the one who created this logo. I'll link him down in the description of this video if you want to check out more of his work. But anyway, the real topic of today's video is my full review of the Saucony Ride 13. Oh, there's a piece of grass hanging from it. So let's get this party started. Play the run footage. A minute until midnight. I'm just wondering where you wait. Just thought I'd call and wish you good night. I left my key under the mat. I don't get anything dying, you're stuck in my mind I keep on missing your touch, missing your vibe This feeling I'm going to say what we had Won't you come on over? Don't you miss me too Give it all you got, babe, give it all you got, baby I'd rather try to Ride 13 is a sleeper hit of 2020. I've seen a couple of reviews and most of them are pretty positive, but it hasn't gotten a ton of attention. And personally, I think it should. The Ride 13 is your bread and butter daily trainer, your workhorse, your everyday shoe. I think a lot of people look at this shoe when they're watching reviews and just seeing what's out there and they think, well, there's nothing really interesting about this shoe. It's just a it's boring old trainer. But I think what I like so much about this shoe is that it's simple. I have over 50 miles in this shoe and I can't wait to tell you all of my thoughts on it. If you're unfamiliar with how I structure my full reviews, let me give you a rundown. First, I'll start with the specs, then we'll go to the upper, the midsole, the outsole, and then my conclusions on the shoe which is where I rate it out of five stars. So if it's the best shoe I've ever worn and I never want to take it off my foot, it's going to be five stars. And if it's the worst shoe I've ever worn and I can't stand to look at it a second longer, it's going to be one star. Then at the end, I'll throw up a screen with the pros and the cons so you can get a visual idea of what I liked and disliked. And one more thing before we get started today, I do want to let you guys know that this shoe was sent to me by Running Warehouse. However, they're not paying me to make this review. They're not going to see it before you. Neither is Saucony. It was sent to me for the purpose of an honest AF review, and that is what you're going to get and what you're always going to get. Let's start with the specs of the Saucony Ride 13. The Saucony Ride 13 is 8.6 ounces for a women's size eight, but for my size, a whopping 10 and a half lemons. This shoe came in at 9.9 .9 ounces. It has an eight millimeter drop with 32 millimeters of stack in the heel and 24 in the forefoot. And yes, the Saucony Ride 13 is true to size. The upper of the Saucony Ride 13 is a form fit engineered mesh with some 3D printed overlays in the midfoot for some extra structure. And at the back we have a sturdy hill counter to provide stability. The one word that comes to mind when I think about the upper of the Ride 13 is comfort. 
I think it is wildly comfortable. I never had issues with blisters or irritation, so that's a huge plus in my book. And in terms of durability, it looks and feels exactly how it did when I first took it out of the box. I would definitely say it's not the most breathable shoe that I've tried, but there is some fair amount of breathability here. I've had this shoe over the summer, so I did take it out on some pretty hot days. It felt fine. I think for what this shoe is, which is a daily trainer, they had to make it a little bit thicker and a little sturdier so that it would stand the test of time and you could have it for hundreds of miles. And I definitely think you're gonna get that many miles out of this upper. Another thing that I really liked about the Ride 13's upper was the lockdown. The gusseted tongue mixed with the laces here really does give you a dialed in fit. I didn't feel like I was sliding around the platform at all in this shoe. And side note, I didn't have any heel slippage at all. Another thing I will say is that this isn't the widest shoe on the market, but it also isn't the most narrow. I have a narrow foot, so I did just fine in the shoe, but I think people with wider feet would do okay. I don't really have any complaints about this upper. Maybe the only thing I would say is that I wish it was a little bit more breathable in the forefoot, but that's really kind of it, and uh, I'm obsessed with this colorway. Salkini is using their Power Run midsole in the Ride 13. This is not Power Run PB, it's not Power Run Plus, it's just regular old Power Run. That is no knock to this foam. I really do enjoy Power Run. It's simple, it's not fancy, and it's to the point. It does what a foam is supposed to do, which is protect your foot from the ground and give you a little bit of response. And I would say it does both of those things just fine. I took this shoe out on countless runs of all different types, longer, shorter, middle of the road, and at paces from anywhere between 9.30 to 7.30. This shoe performed well no matter what I threw at it. It's not so cushioned that you're gonna sink down into that foam, which makes it harder to pick up the pace, and it's not so firm that it's gonna trash your legs. In fact, when I ran fast in this shoe, I felt like it shined. Regular Power Run might not have the response that Power Run Plus or Power Run PB have, but it's still cut from the same cloth and you definitely feel a spring back. Now, something that I do wanna point out is that if you're looking for a plush daily trainer, this is not gonna be the option that you wanna pick. Like I said, it's not harsh, but it's certainly not plush. There are other shoes out there that are in this category that are softer. I would say maybe like a couple millimeters more of foam in the forefoot, just, just a little bit. I'm not asking for a triumph, I'm just asking for maybe Come a little, just, just a teeny. If I have to be nitpicky, that's something I would say. Another great thing about Power Run Foam is that it's durable. Like the upper, the midsole feels exactly how it did when I first took it out of the box. I think it's pretty resilient and you'll get just as many miles out of the midsole as you will out of the upper. Moving on to the outsole, Saucony is using blown rubber in the Ride 13. They're also using their TriFlex design, which increases flexibility and durability of the shoe. We do have a fair amount of rubber here. You know, we got a lot in the forefoot, we got some in the midfoot area on the medial and lateral side, and we got some in the heel. I guess in some cases I would say this is a little too much rubber, but here I don't think it is, especially because this is a daily trainer. You're gonna be throwing a lot at the shoe. I do appreciate these flex grooves. The forefoot of the shoe flexed very nicely. But the one thing I will say about this rubber is that it's not holding up as well as the upper and the midsole. The traction pattern is wearing down quite a bit, especially in the midfoot area. And on slippery wet surfaces, uh, I'm a little bit uneasy about the traction here. I do like that the rubber is softer so that it's not making the ride of the shoe feel too harsh, but this is not my favorite outsole. Still, it wouldn't deter me from buying the shoe, but you know, I gotta point these things out. I think that the Ride 13 is so good for so many different types of runners. For It's great for a beginner who's just starting out and it's great for an experienced seasoned marathon runner. I really feel like it can handle any type of pace that's thrown at it. If you can only have one shoe, I feel like the Ride 13 is a pretty good choice. And for that, I'm giving the Saucony Ride 13 four out of five stars. I did knock this shoe down for the outsole and for breathability. I think we could see some improvements there. All right, so now let's throw up the screen with the pros and the cons. For pros, I have weight. It's not so bad for a daily trainer. I have the comfortable upper. I have the power run midsole feel and versatility. For cons, I have that this shoe could definitely be a little bit more breathable and the outsole traction could be better, but that's really it.
The Saucony Ride 13 is $129.95 on runningwarehouse.com, which is I think a pretty fair price for a shoe that can do a lot for you. If you're interested in picking up your own pair of the Saucony Ride 13, Running Warehouse has you covered. I will link them down in the description below. Click that link and pick up your own pair. Keep in mind it is an affiliate link, but that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep making these reviews and hopefully helping you pick out your perfect shoe. This is one of my favorite shoes. And I think, I think if you guys tried it, it would be one of your favorite shoes too. Well guys, that concludes my full review of the Saucony Ride 13. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit that notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. This color is wild. I have some more videos for you guys next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like heller. See you next time. The Saucony Ride 13 is 129.95.com on Running Warehouse. The Saucony Ride 13 is 129.95 on runningwarehouse.com.